Welcome to Force Perspective. But I'm, I'm just supposed to ignore this. Really? It... Seriously? Today we'll be taking a look at something a little different. And I do mean a little. It's still a video game, and it's still on PC. It's Dungeon Munchies. An early access title. Which is something I try to actively avoid in most cases. I've never been a big fan of the idea of buying a promise, but this one caught my eye because Steam doesn't tell you when a game is in early access while browsing, and so I thought it was finished. But after that, I became interested in the early access pitch, which says, and I quote, the current version of Dungeon Munchies is complete, but each additional dish, creature, map, and feature needs time and more eyes to review and test. Later on stating, it should feel like a decent, semi-polished short game in its current state. Okay. I review those things. So, let's find out if Dungeon Munchie lives up to its promise. That's not indicative of anything that's supposed to happen, it's a part of the s You're dead. But it's okay, you get brought back as an undead. And your necromatic master's pretty cool, only wants you to cook delicious meals. But in a sick twist of fate, this world's only inhabitants are said to eat produce. And with the immediate need to reach the underground star gate, you have no choice. No, that's right. But why am I not using the monitor? Dungeon Munchies is a side-scrolling action platformer where you take down enemies in order to collect their delicious bits and turn them into magical body-enhancing foods. Also weapons, but that's not quite as on brand. As for how the food system works, when you kill enemies, they drop various ingredients that can be turned into dishes, which give you different effects as long as they are in your stomach. Which is actually an important clarification because you can only have seven dishes in your stomach at a time. Basically, it's a more flavorful alternative to conventional equipment. You are free to blah it up whenever you want and eat something different with no penalty. And once you've made a dish, you have it forever. That's not honestly what I expected from this coming in, but I like it. It's cute. The effects are pretty interesting with things like generating a damaging water vortex or leaving behind an electric trail of slime or spawning bees. There's a lot of weird stuff and I appreciate that. I mean, there's a bunch of boring stuff also like weapon specific damage buffs and attack speed buffs and other extremely effective things, but well, I mean, they sort of pale in comparison, don't they? As for the other half of this equation, weapons are obtained similarly to food. Which is a weird sentence to have to say. But basically all it means is that you craft them. Sometimes with the same materials that could be used to make a dish. It's really not that special. The interesting part about how weapons are handled is the two-handed system. You have primary and secondary weapons that you can mix and match. So you can have, say, a bow in your main hand and a hatchet in your other hand or an axe and a sword, or a sword and a sword, or you can have a shield in your offhand, but when another option is an enslaved laser bug on a stick, I don't see a lot of people picking that. I mean, maybe if the primary weapons had some flair to them, I could see picking up a shield, but they don't. The primary weapons are about the type of weapon you want, choosing between sword, axe, dagger, spear, or bow. And then past that, you just pick whichever one was most recently unlocked because it does more damage. And that's the only difference. Well, except aesthetic, I guess, but... How much more can you add? So, with the primary weapons being so bare bones, it's really up to whatever you have in your offhand and your food load out to add a little pizzazz to your build and I mean that's fine there is a decent number of options there and it's not like the game is lacking in variety I just sort of wish there was something to get me a little bit excited about a new primary weapon but overall the equipment is good it is it's fun it's fun to have a home at class and then kill stuff with the results okay I've I've fallen in love with the concept and the execution is good too well, the, the cooking is... I'm in two minds about the killing. 
which is new for me. The problem I have with this combat is the lack of impact that attacks have. And with a lot of weapons having very fast attack times, my issue isn't that there's not enough knockback or hit stun. The problem is how the combat is presented. The animations are serviceable, but in no way satisfying, and the sounds... Well... It's almost scary how on the nose that is. Now, in the name of fairness, I'll tell you that that is the most extreme example, but it's not an uncharacteristic one. The sounds are clearly not done, and that makes the combat less satisfying. It doesn't ruin it. Mechanically, the two-handed weapon system and unique effects that food give you allow for some pretty interesting builds, and those builds translate into more interesting combat regardless of playstyle. Which doesn't make up for the presentation problems, but it can make you forget about them for a bit. And then when you consider that there's also a good enemy variety, with most of those enemies also having a decent variety of attacks that they use, great mobility, be it the apparently standard now invincible dodge roll, or just general movement that comes with being a platformer, you realize that the lackluster presentation doesn't change just how active and engaging this combat is. It's not super challenging, but it's designed really well. Just not visually or audibly. And even then, that's only most of the combat, because there are three exceptions. And those are the three bosses. Now, I'm not going to say that the bosses are terrible, Okay, the first boss is mostly stationary, has way too much health, doesn't do anything impressive or threatening, and is terrible. But my thoughts on the other two are a little more complicated, because I like the visual design, once again, except for the first one. I like that they have bullet hell elements in one or more stages of their fights, though I do think it can drag on a little bit. And overall, I would say most of the components of these boss fights are at worst competent. But then that lack of impact rears its ugly head again, and this time I do think it ruins the combat. It feels like you're fighting a war of attrition against a lion armed with nothing but a toothpick. And in fairness, I was using a spear for both these fights, which is arguably the most toothpick-like of weapons, but I also had bees, and even those felt bad. And they're wasps! I think the biggest thing is just how much time you have to soak in how bad dealing damage feels. Because all of the bosses have what seems to be an obscene amount of health, and even worse states that give them damage resistance. So not only do you feel like you're doing nothing, you can look at the damage numbers and see just how ineffectual your pathetic stabbings are. It's not a great experience which is honestly a shame because the dance is pretty fun. Using all your mobility and evasive tools to avoid the boss's various attacks does work. That part's good. But when the single, solitary action that will always have to be taken to defeat an enemy like this, when dealing damage is a chore, then there's no pride or accomplishment to victory. It's unfortunate. But with that out of the way, the only bit of gameplay left to discuss is the platforming. And it's one of those cases where it's good, but not amazing enough to draw much attention to itself. The jumping controls well, not once did I have difficulty with it. I do see a small lack of visual polish when it comes to the jumping, but it's so small that I can't even identify what it is. I just know it's there. Probably. And then the other thing to bring up when it comes to the platforming is the permanent movement upgrades, which come in the form of body parts that are attached to you. And these upgrades are a double jump, wall jump, ground dash, and air dash. The last of which is my favorite, and least favorite. But there's not all that much to critique or praise when it comes to these upgrades. They help keep the platforming fresh and are a very welcome addition to the game, but the thing that hit me the most in regards to these abilities doesn't have anything directly to do with them. It's that these types of mobility upgrades and this sort of series of corridors level design that's going on is very prevalent in Metroidvanias. 
but this isn't a metroidvania. And that thought brought me to the stunning realization that these levels aren't a series of corridors. More often than not, they're a large, singular, slightly twisting corridor. And I'm not bringing this up because I think this game needs to or is trying to be a metroidvania. It's just that once you know that there's little to no divergence from this one path, you start to feel a little boxed in. And I think all it would take to alleviate this is some optional distractions every once in a while. There's already a small number of hidden recipes and ingredients that you could find, but something a little more substantial would help a lot, I think. Because I'm fine with this game being linear by design, I just would have liked a small taste of freedom in these narrow halls so that I wouldn't think about it so much. That's all. Good job on the moment by moment platforming though, I enjoyed that quite a bit. And with that, there's really only one thing left to mention before I get into the technical stuff, because this is going to be discussed. But there is an all-encompassing element to this game that needs to be taken care of first. It's the charm. I hate using that word, but nothing else really describes it. Because it's not just the writing, it's not just the characters, it's everything. It's the atmosphere of the world that's been created. And I know that I've used this word a lot today, but it's fun! Everything's pleasant, even when the subject matter isn't. The game realizes that it's a silly food video game, and just goes with it. But not to such a ludicrous degree as to jeopardize the serious emotional moments. It, the charm enhanced my enjoyment of every single part of this game. The world and its inhabitants are the only thing that I can't find to complain about. It's wonderful. I do still have complaints though. The obvious one coming from me anyways, is that the options menu isn't very good. And even though for the most part I've been treating this like a full game, I do understand that these options aren't going to be a focus in an early access title. I just don't care. Put rebindable keys in your games! Yeah, I may like your default setup, but that's not the point. Let people choose what works best for them. Some people are going to be physically incapable of using the default. Thank you. Also, don't use a controller in this, it's awful, and the resolution button doesn't work very well. Other than that, yeah, everything's good on the technical side. I had one or two instances of random slowdown, but for the most part, everything runs well. And with that being the last thing I could poke any holes in, and most of these complaints being present in more than a few fully released games, I guess Dungeon Munchies really does feel like a semi-polished short game in its current state, but it's not decent. It's better than that. I've been extremely critical of every aspect of this game because of what it is, because I don't like early access, and even with me having that unfair bias, I still liked it. It's got issues, but it's good at its core. The biggest thing that would make me hesitant to recommend this game in its current state, ignoring the promise of future content, is the amount of content that we have right now. You know, I enjoy what's here, but I don't think it even gets to hit its full stride. It starts picking up speed, and then it's the end of the chapter. So, I suppose if they keep up this pace and add more chapters, then we should be good. But that's the thing, there's that if, that's always been my problem with purchasing an unfinished product. You don't know for sure what you're going to get. I have trust issues! That, and I'm not even sure the amount of content I'm supposed to be expecting? I couldn't find anything from the developers themselves saying how many chapters are planned. There's a Rock Paper Shotgun article that says this is the first of four chapters, and PC Invasion says this is the first chapter with four more on the way, which are conflicting reports, and also I don't see a source for either of them, so I don't know. I don't know how many chapters there's going to be. I think a total of four chapters similar in scale to this first one would be a very solid amount of content for a game like this, but who knows? That's the biggest question mark when trying to evaluate what exactly is being sold here. So I guess, in the name of sanity, I just won't. And when I look at the roughly three hours of gameplay in this first chapter, I do think that it's of a high enough quality to warrant a purchase. I really do, but I think perhaps it's a little overpriced for the amount of content when you look at it like I am and ignore the promise of big updates. 
But even that's totally subjective, and overall Dungeon Munchies is able to stand on its own legs. It's a wee bit shaky at times, you could feel the lack of polish, but this is a legitimately fun game right now, and it can become something even better. Hopefully. I'll be waiting. <laughs> In a non-threading earnest way though. Do we It's not finished. <sighs> I was really banking on you clicking that one.